ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Community Recreation Commission meeting for Thursday, January 23rd. We will call the meeting to order at 640. Would everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I believe everybody got a chance to see the agenda when it went out. I'd like a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Any discussion about it? All in favor? Yay. All right. <laughs> um, Madam Secretary, got our, our minutes submitted uh, from December 5th, 2019. Any questions about the minutes? And mm -hmm. I need a motion to approve the minutes from December 5th, 2019. I'll make that motion. Good second. And Karen, any discussion? So moved. Okay, we have Jira with us tonight. They're gonna come up and do a presentation about an update on the airport recreation area and requests and adjustments. Who's coming up tonight? <laughs> All right, hi Pat. Hello everyone. Your name. <laughs> hi, I'm Patrick McGrath. I'm the executive director of Jira Sports. And uh, I'm here to follow up on uh, December 5th meeting. <clears throat> uh, where we were uh, presenting our uh, dilemma about uh, space. So I put this presentation together to hope to clarify uh, in as much detail as possible exactly what our situation is and what we're looking to do. Um, just to recap, on the fifth uh, meeting, I think, Greg, you proposed uh, through after some conversation uh, that um, the city provide, or excuse me, the township provide um, some official drawings of our proposal um, and that was approved verbally, I think. We got a, a message from Kim on the 19th of December uh, that the township was not uh, going to provide funding for those drawings. And uh, we then uh, asked for, via email, uh, approval to work with the city engineering firm uh, so that we could get the survey of the land so that we might provide drawings on our own. Now, we had no reply from that request. So then we went out uh, into the open market to see how would we, we go about getting a survey, and it would require a firm to come out and actually resurvey the land again. Uh, and this is after the first year at this point. Very expensive and redundant since that survey already exists. So this is what we uh, are proposing, at least at this stage of the game. So why do we need an adjustment to the field? It's not that we need more land. The shape of the land is not conducive to baseball diamonds, basically. Uh, it's a round peg or a square peg in a round hole. Uh, so we're seeking some minor adjustment to the east boundary of the land. And I have a map here that I'll show you to make it a little easier. Um, we've been asked before, can you make your field smaller? Well, we have. We've continually made them as small as possible. Uh, one thing to note that um, we want to get maximum usage of the fields. And after consulting with some other uh, municipalities and uh, baseball people, um, the recommendation universally was that we build a field that was um, playable all the way through adult softball. And the reason for that is because there's revenue to be generated from adult softball leagues. Um, and there's a minimum requirement on the size of that field. It's 280 feet, it's 280 to 315. But the minimum size on that is 280 feet down the fall line. So we've done everything we can to minimize, or there are some latitudes in baseball fields, how far the foul fence is from the, the line, as an example, um, the backstop from the plate. So we've minimized as much of those specifications as we can. And uh, what we're gonna show you today is a 280 foot field and a 200 foot field oriented in the space that was allocated. How much space does the baseball field take? Well, here's a chart. Um, that shows that um, depending on the configuration of the field, it can range from one and a half acre all the way up to five and a half or four and a half acres. Well, the two highlighted uh, areas are roughly the size of the field that we're interested in building. And uh, some of those two is about 3.5 acres. So today we're asking you to consider uh, a slight change in the allocation, an adjustment, if you will, uh, to the east side of the, the property. Uh, that adjustment is roughly 0.16 acre, right? So less uh, than the uh, fifth of an acre. 
And in exchange for that, um, the area that is to the immediate east of the land, um, which is a makeshift parking area, vacant lot area, uh, would be reduced by approximately 0.19 acres. And the rest of the adjustment uh, involves unused land. Well, this slide, and I, I, I don't know if you heard me earlier, the printed deck that you have is not in the same order. In order to expedite this, I kind of crunched it up. All the slides are the same, they're just in a different order. Keep you on your toes. Okay, so this is the, uh, the recreation park. It's actually 31 acres in total, but uh, usable at the moment is 21 acres. And that's uh, the boundary that you see. And uh, the allocation as it's currently laid out is uh, the green areas of football, the gyro football usage. Uh, purple in the middle is uh, Giza soccer. Uh, the blue area is where people park. Uh, the brown area at the bottom left is the sled hill. Uh, you'll see the gyro clubhouse there in gold. And then the allocated uh, land for gyro baseball that was granted back in November of 2018. Still some unused areas around the back of the sled hill and to the north of the gyro allocation for baseball. This is the breakout of percentage, uh, again, just showing what of the land that's available, how it's currently being utilized. So back to uh, the allocation that was given um, to the gyro organization. Uh, you'll see that when we put two diamonds into the space, and it's, it's important to note the red lines are, at least the right angle red lines on each of these fields, are the, the actual chalk lines of a baseball field. So that defines the 280 and 200 foot uh, dimensions that we speak of. Although that alone is not big enough for a baseball field, you need to have foul territory and a fence that goes around and the whole bit. So the white lines are where a fence would be. So everything inside of that would be the baseball field. Spectators would be outside of the, the white fence. And you can see, again, it's very tight, very tight. I have a question yes. for you, Patrick. Yes. Is that 280-foot diamond, is that suitable for the softball yes, and everything else? Yes, it okay. is. Yes. Um, so you'll see that in the area that people park in, at least that is uh, on the recreation property, um, there is um, an area to the north of uh, the property that kind of bisects the property in half. This has been a long conversation about is that actually a parking lot, uh, what is it used for? What was the intent? Um, you'll see that in all of the uh, community recreation five-year plans, as far back as you want to go, um, the, uh, uh, the recommended, recommended usage of the land never involves this area for parking. There is no documentation that says this area should be used for parking. doesn't mean people don't park there. People park all over the place wanted to point that out. You'll see that in this configuration, the gold highlight that you see on the screen now is where we would encroach into that parking lot. Um, mind you, none of the presentation here today involves any other land other than this uh, makeshift parking lot area and unused land. No soccer field, nothing else. So what we're proposing today is this ladle shape extension uh, of the land. And it's roughly 18 feet off of our current border for about 250 feet, and then at the top it widens out to the full 60 feet of the width of that space by about 100 feet long. That the remain the parking area in quotes, mind you, um, is at its minimum distance from east to west about 60 feet wide. It gets wider as you get further south. Um, so by moving the boundary just 18 feet to the east, that lot is still available, if you will, for parking. 42 feet is more than enough for a uh, uh, perpendicular parking along the uh, east side of uh, the soccer field, or the west side of the soccer field. Any questions on that one? I do. Uh, approximately how many cars will be, would be affected by that? Um, what's the standard for a car, Mike? Well, we would say that uh, I think nine and a half is what you would have by a city standard, but with their actually parking out here, it's probably 15 feet on center. So, you know, depending on, on how people would park there, it's not like it's an organized parking lot. There are no lines. So when people go to park, they just park where there's an open space to park. Um, my guess is probably no more than 20 or 30 cars. Is there a time when baseball and soccer play at the same time? Yeah. There is? All right. Sure. Yeah. 
Yeah, the white diamond. Yes. And then we couldn't get back to that field or that little parked area in the back because your fence looks like it's right up against well the i mean it's to scale there's probably uh 10 feet between the soccer field maybe actually 15 feet between the soccer field and the white fence and what about the memorial it's nowhere near it so um our proposal is again we're not looking necessarily for more land the shape of the land is our issue so the, you see the area down at the bottom that I have it in green? That's the area that was allocated to us. I thought that would be use. We, we would give that back, right? So in the, at the end of the day, the net would be just a very little bit of extra land. I have all these calculations. We won't go through them today, but if anybody wants to question how I came up with the um, amount of, uh, of acreage and the exchange, uh, these tables are in here for your review if you have any questions. I'll pause there for a moment. Does, does the board understand our request for a reallocation of the line? <coughs> now, so what? No, there's. Yeah, let me speak to. No, no, they don't. That's a f there's a fence on the back on the north side of the hill. Used on that side. Yeah, it's a gentle, yeah, it's a gentle gradual slope on that back. I will call it the north side of the sled hill. And for clarification, I know there's been a lot of social media and even uh, some press about the sled hill and a lot of uh, a lot of discussion around that. Jiver um, baseball is getting a pretty bad rap that we were requesting to move the snow hill. The township approached us about would we be able to build the field if the snow hill was moved? So I'll be very clear that we did not <coughs> advocate for the snow hill to be removed. So now that we're talking about land, can somebody tell me when did we start cleaning some of that area up over there? What month last year was that? Yeah, was that, yes. Oh, has, that's been ripped out of there for a year and a half? Seems like we're just watching. All right, because I guess my question is when I mean, I'm going back to, and I, I'm just going to put this out there because I had these printed off of February of last year. It says, if the land is approved by the CRC for field development, all costs of engineering, development, construction, and maintenance will be absorbed by Gyra Baseball that, Softball. That's correct. We did vote and approve, Brower and so I mean, and so I pulled this. So going back to paying for the diagrams, I think we were all caught up last month or something with that. and. Uh, we shouldn't pay for the diagrams in my eye, you know, I, it says Chad, it right, right here. Interrupt. I, I think there's a misunderstanding, at least the way I see it. I think what these guys want is they just want the copies or the documents that the engineering department, Rains, isn't it? Yes, Kim? Charles Rains. That Rains already has. There's no work involved in. No. But we've given them document after document. No, you have not. What's the one that had the six, eight squares on it? I don't know, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for. Wade Trim, that's that. That was from Wade Trim. That, yeah, but that was from the uh, five-year plan. In order to produce so all that is. an engineering document, you need a surveyed plot to work off of, and that exists. The city has that. It was done just recently to help define the wetland by, by Charles Rain. We've talked to the city engineer multiple times. He knows exactly what we want. He just says that the township has not given approval for him to work with us even. Let alone, we, we can't even pay him to do this. All right, well, and then, so you're going to go into the uh, the numbers, right, of how you're going to fund this? Did I see a grant no, here? No, well, I mean, it's just making reference to some oh. background. If you guys had any questions, I want to be prepared. Um, I said if, if you guys were to approve tonight, what would we, what we would do next is uh, we would start moving quickly into getting those engineering drawings. That's the very next step for us, right? Now, if we're going to have to go get it resurveyed because we can't have access to the existing survey that exists, it's very expensive for us to do. We're, we will do it. But I don't want to invest five or $10,000 and then come back and you say, no, you went over your allocated line, fields won't fit, sorry. Which is why I'm asking for this buffer so that I have some confidence when we go to plot these fields in, they'll, st they'll fit within the boundaries. I need two things. Right. Yep. All you need from us is us to tell Rains to release the engineering drawings, survey drawings that they already have. Yeah. They're electronic in nature. They're not documents. Yes. Yes. So that you guys can take that and then 
start your engineering, absolutely, and design construction process to see if it'll actually work. Yep, that's where we're at right now. Yep, two things. Yeah, I, this, this is a repeat of what we talked about last time, right. but we understand. Yeah, we want to make sure. But it's clear that's right. what you're looking for. You're yes, looking it is. For rains to release drawings to you so that you guys can proceed ahead. Right? Yeah. Now, it was our understanding that last week you guys agreed to pay for it, which was fine. We didn't oppose that. But that was clarified two weeks after the meeting. Kim sent a communication to us that <coughs> the township was not going to pay for it. To be clear, we had no more communication between now and then, or between then and uh, the communication that wasn't going to be paid for. Um, okay, we accept that. But in our response the next day to that, that acknowledgement that there would be no funding by the township was, again, well, we've asked for the approval to work with Reigns and these drawings. This isn't the first request. This is probably the fifth request, twice in a public forum in this meeting and multiple times in other forums and emails. Um, and so we've been a little frustrated with that because we, th it doesn't cost the township any money to, to give the approval for us to work with them. So I'm not sure what the issue is, but there's clearly um, something in the way there. So yeah. two things, looking for a little bit of uh, easement, the, uh, the 18 feet on the south side of the property and the 60 feet on the north side. And then, as you said, Greg, the second thing is the approval uh, to work with the city engineer. I have a quick question. So I see where your priority is the grant. Mm -hmm. Is that already in like? No, we works? can't get a we can't re we can't request the grant till we have. Okay. So my next question is, I see match dollar for dollar. Yes. Is, is your your target's two hundred grand? So you think two hundred thousand is what's going to cost to build two fields? Yeah. Well, I mean, fields can cost a range from fifty thousand dollars to a million dollars. Okay. Right? No, I'm just saying two hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking. We're at trying it, to so budget about against a hundred thousand dollar funding effort with a match okay. of a hundred thousand dollars. Now we're going to continue to um, seek funding for even beyond that. Sure. Lights no, 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 I, I get nature. it. Yeah. So, so what happens if things go your way and you, you go into the grant application? I, I don't know how long a grant takes to get. I have no clue. Major League Baseball and the Players Association have a, a quarterly uh, accept a okay. application process. So, so you it, get a quick turnaround. Yeah. 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 But my, my question is if, if you only, so obviously if you only raise 10,000, they're only gonna give you 10,000. Yeah. Do you go reapply for the grant again? If you raise I, more money? I don't money think we would do that. We would just go uh, against the amount of money that we had at the time. And just one question, number four, who's, what's GIT? Maybe I'm- Rose Hill Township. Okay. Uh, Jim, Call me Mr. Stupid, Nelson. sorry. Any questions? Yeah, I spent most of my whole life in a field. <laughs> so my first concern is uh, the safety of yep putting these fields where they are currently. So are we comfortable with this configuration from a safety standpoint, yeah, all absolutely. flying around? Yeah, I mean, first off, on the big field, 280 feet, just to give you guys some idea how long that is, right? The high school baseball field's 310 feet. And at least in the years that my kid played varsity sports there, I think I saw three balls go over a fence. Those are by, you know, 18-year-old young men hitting a baseball <coughs> being thrown at 80 miles an hour. These are kids playing on the field by and large. The only risk of somebody hitting a ball over the fence on that field is adult softball. What about foul balls? Foul balls, the way that our field is oriented, we'd be going backwards. And you know, a lot of times you saw these, you know, the uh, fields oriented the other way around where they were facing with the home plate closest to the uh, uh, soccer field. That's actually way worse because there are probably 100 or 200 foul balls for every uh, home run. What about uh, in these these fences that I'm showing here? This netting, can, I mean, this is a, a 20 foot um, fence. They can go up to 40 feet. And 40 feet high, 200 yards or 200 feet away, it's there's no way a ball's going over it. It's got a lot of, of I've seen those nets that you're talking about. Sun. Angle of the sun being in the angle of the sun, the baseball field uh, ideal orientation in North America is a northeast presentation from the batter, um, and that's what we have. In fact, both of the fields have that orientation in wind direction. That an issue? Probably not. In eh? no, okay. Um, can you Pat, can you go to that recommended baseball field location? The drawing you have right here, yeah, on the screen, yep. So, is that it? Uh, that's one you just held up and showed me. Oh, all right. 
I, I guess back to the question is the five year plan from 2006 to 2011, everything looked like it was perfect. Plus, we've we've yet oh. given you additional land over there. No, What's it's not happened? perfect. There's the the everything seems to fit right there. Oh, there's no parking in there. There's, those are 200 foot fields, and there's no egress between the two fields back there. Right. There's a parking right here. No, there's a tree, and the parking's at the bottom. Well, it looks like a little. Right. And, and the other thing I might add is that, yeah, these are both 200 foot fields. So, all right, yeah. And we want to go bigger. <coughs> I, I'm good. I'm, all right. Can you go back to the picture, the, the proposed picture? Okay, so on the, on the, on the one point, on the point one six acres, yes. the outlined in yellow, yep. that is definitely not affecting the monument that's there. Not even close. Okay, because there's feedback from that. I understand, and, and um, you know that's that's you know w when people start approaching people and complaining and you know there's uh you know we have to look at things carefully. So I need to be be certain that that's not. Yeah, we have affecting. some guests here from that. Okay. Question. Yeah, we yeah. okay. I mean. We, we had some um, some conversations with Mr. Snyder, who actually, we, he knew that we were interested in building fields, came to us and, and made us aware that there was a memorial there. So we were in communications with him. We've always known it was there. We were, you know, I, we don't get into it, but um, that's not an issue. Okay, so everything that you're showing here, that's <clears throat> what your plans are. There's nothing, we're not gonna get surprised, right? Not unless you guys surprise us again. Okay. I want to show you a, a zoomed in view uh, so you guys can get a better idea of what that space would look like here. Does that help at all? Those are storage containers right there. We're going to have to find somewhere to park, though, eventually. There's, There's plenty of places right to there park. Where the, um, uh, I, don't, I don't know how you describe it. You got the. Uh, those containers, which I don't know whose those are or why they got approved to be put out there, but to the east of those is where the uh, memorials, that white outline is where the memorial is, correct? It's on, the memorial's on the grass, and it's round. It's barely visible, but there are two rectangles. One that's here, I'll, I'll use my mouse. Yeah, this right is, there. This is that's the memorial. It, right? Yes. Okay. okay. Are you ladies following this out there? Okay. Cool. Would there be room between the playing fields to be able to drive back there to park in that unused land there could be yeah there could be an access road that right on this area right here you're referring because i could see that being you know at least some parking i don't want a parking um, lot back there i want a fountain and some well we well we, we all research. want that but i'm trying to solve we did a research problem. on how many how many recommended parking spots per field there's data out there on this and the uh the parking on the south side of the uh well i'm sorry i can get back to my powerpoint There currently is 3.1 acres of available parking on the land today, which is significant. And you can see that's the configuration of that. Mm -hmm. Now, all of the, the purple on the bottom, mind you, when, when there are bigger events, soccer tournaments, <coughs> parking you know, moves south, right? And again, our recommendation, I understand you know, parking is, is a bit, it isn't about how much parking, it's about the location of that parking. You know, if, if you had a parcel of land that was 21 acres and you wanted to use it in its maximum capacity, you wouldn't put a parking lot down the middle of it. So what is the slope of the sled hill? Where would the sleds be? Yeah, so the sledders come down. down one or two areas. Most recently, they come down from a, here, I'll show you on the, uh, if you can see my mouse, there is two tracks right here, white ones. One going almost due east and the other going due south. Sledders go in between those two. There are fences that run right here. Along, they're black on this drawing, but they run around the edges of that. It's about a, I'd say a 130 degree angle right there. So you can't go off the back side, you can't go off the north side, if you will, or the west side of the hill. So sledders would be going almost due east towards the soccer field. This, uh, we would not interfere whatsoever with that.
Kim. Maintenance costs for the two new fields and currently, Kim, are you maintaining other fields on Girls Eel for baseball? Yeah. Last, last year we maintained nine fields, um, roughly $1,500 to $2,000 for maintenance to help Gyra. Um, and then we'll come to the commission um, to vote February if we will continue that process. So yeah, let me clear up. Maintenance is kind of a yeah, yeah lining, it's not, it's lining, lining the field lining. for games. Right. But I, yeah. you know, I see an email from somebody that says, "Oh, well, we just want to make sure we break even," and that's what it makes me going into the project, this project, which we want to see. You know, right. but it's we've one committed of, one of your people saying the onset, that, you as know. you said, that we would maintain the fields um, these all fields. year. As long as we can, one of the caveats for us is if we can have a field that's capable of adult softball that can generate revenue to offset a lot of the costs, that would be significant. Well, we'd like to see that too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the community would rather have a field that adult softball could be played on. I mean, that's, sure. that's a given. If we're going to build a field and we're that close, we might as well do it the right way. Questions? Karen, is, you got something? Well, no, I'm new, so I am. Hi. Just, hi. Um, so right now we have nine existing Baseball diamonds, and is that what you said, Kim? Have eight, well, and Sacred Heart is nine. Well, it depends on how they counted it in this uh, deal, but we uh, we play on nine fields. Mm -hmm. So there are two fields at Park Lane that are used for no other purpose than t-ball and you know small kids, uh, kids uh, eight and under, uh, and then all the high school, middle school fields. So the middle school has um, three fields that we use, and the high school has three fields as well. No, we actually maintain, we uh, fund a lot of the repairs and improvements in all of those fields. Any more questions? Yeah, the, the area, 15,000. <clears throat> there's a triangle shaped area south of the 280 foot field. Is that with me? Okay. You said that this would be a give back, like a trade off yeah. for yeah. the. I mean, is there a way that that could be repurposed and just expanded parking? I think it could be. It's, it's relatively flat, even though the sled hill was there. The sled hill flattens out at the base, obviously. In this area alone, I mean, the the slope on the back of the sled hill is actually pretty gradual, right? It's 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 a, sl a gentle slope um, going north. So you could actually <laughs> cut out some of that. Um, on the inside of the fence, if you will, and it, would, it wouldn't affect the hill at all, but it would have more, more available land. In, in the summertime, people can park all, I mean, I'm gonna show you my mouse here, but all of this area by the sled hill, can, you could park on, and people do. In the wintertime, obviously, if they don't let a sled down there, you wouldn't park there, but. Any more questions? I'm good. Great. We appreciate uh, the time. I know that we've been at this a long time. Oh, wait. It feels redundant. We're not done yet. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, I guess what? The first thing you're asking for is to release those drawings to you. Yeah. The, Mike, aren't you, a, aren't you a drawing guy? I'm it's, sorry. He is. <laughs> He's a civil engineer. He's a civil engineer, engineer yeah. Unless he goes out with his boots and uh, does a resurvey the land, it doesn't help us. We, we have to start with the base. Hmm. I think everybody understands that, right? In order to draw fields, we need to have what we're working with. And that survey exists. And again, if, if we can't have it, we'll go get a new one. <laughs> but it's you know probably going to be $5,000 or more to do that. Chad, can I make a motion that uh, we the township releases the engineer drawings to Gyra Baseball at no cost to the township so that Gyra Baseball can keep moving this project along? Yes. Hold on one second. Could I add a sentence to, add to that? Yes. Action item. Yeah. Could I add a, a sentence to that? I didn't hear what you said, and Jim. I'm sorry. We have to add. To add an action item to action. the agenda. Oh. To that, uh, Greg, um, if we could also get approval to work with the city engineer, it would be more efficient. As so long, there's, he, he no won't work as with long us. as there's no cost to the township. No, no cost whatsoever. We just want to work with their firm instead of creating another firm or going to another firm, which I think that would be in the township's benefit. I'll second it. Okay. So the, we'll have to add an action item. Greg, I'm going to let you word that. Uh, and this is to release the drawings. Just drawings. Just the drawings. And then maybe they can fit everything in over there. You never know, you know? I don't know. 
All right, so the, the, the proposal or the motion is going to say um, we, the township will release the engineering drawings from Reigns to Gyra Baseball and that uh, Reigns will work with Gyra Baseball at no cost to the township. So that, that work for you, action. Kim? <clears throat> that work for you? Yeah, that's, yeah. I just know we amended the agenda, and I want to make sure that everyone's okay adding a, an action item. After well, then we can take B agenda. off of that. That's, would a, would a well, second what? action item I'm be needed? I'm not okay with not <coughs> asking for the yellow. I'd like you guys to approve or disapprove, whatever you're going to do, this request for the allocated land. It makes a huge difference to us, as, you, as I tried to point out. If we can't have the extra 18 feet on the south side and the extra 60 feet on the north side, we can't fit these two dimension fields in there. I don't need an engineering firm to tell me that. You guys can see it right here. We need a it second action fit. item for that? No, that's on there. Notice. I do have one last question in regards to that for the, for the spacing of the fields. You're telling me with certainty that this will not encroach the existing playing field of the soccer. No, can't, not okay. whatsoever. You can't really say that until you see the drawings. Yeah. Well, Correct okay. me if I'm wrong. We're going to have you're going to bring the drawings, the drawings to before, us yeah. before they actually. We're going to bring you a uh, set of engineering drawings that would be within this boundary for you to, and the city's going to have to prove it anyways. I mean, we we understand that. So if we came up with a drawing that showed our field going into soccer. Okay, then you say no. But what I want to not have happen is I come back with a drawing that encroaches somewhat into this parking lot, no more than the yellow lines that I have that I have shown, and then you say no because it's encroaching into that parking lot. I think that's fair, personally. All right, then uh, can we just add action items B and the new one together, or does it have to be a whole new action item? I'm not 100 percent sure. I would just There's add some township guys out there. Action. Right? I believe it's a third action item. Yeah. Third. All right. I mean, I honestly think your city manager could just call the engineering firm and tell them to work with us, and we'd be fine. So Greg, word that. I'm just going to write here. it down that you want right. to put action item 11 C to amend the agenda to say. You did good. What was that again? Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, to make a motion, we're making a motion here to make a motion that Grosseal Township will release the drawings from Reigns to Gyra Baseball and work with Gyra Baseball at no cost to Gross Hill Township. Any cost from Reigns will be absorbed by Gyra Baseball. Absolutely. Oh. All right. Second. I also. Oh. Yeah. What? What? So just. But I don't think so either, Mike, but we, we just want to. I just want to clarify. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just for the public, right? We're not asking for the township to spend any any funds whatsoever. So we amended the agenda. Greg put the motion. Who's second? Rich. Rich, any more discussion about this? I have one comment after. You guys aren't voting now, right? No. Okay, right. No, we have to wait till we get down there, but okay. Brandon. Okay. I do, but this is for action item B okay. for the land adjustment. Um, they want to get 18 feet and another 60 feet. Yeah. As we move forward, so the public knows, and I'm sure all you are aware, the field that we're trying to build is a township field. We, it'll be owned by the township. It'll be governed by the township. It is the property of the township. Gyra Sports is merely advocating for the building of the fields as baseball citizens, if you will, and generating the funding to do that. And that the funding, the $200,000 that we're looking to generate will be gifted to the township. So that we're clear here is that we're building, we're requesting to build a city asset on city property, I'm sorry, township asset on township property, and that the usage of those fields is up to the township, how they're used, when they're used, who uses them, how much, you know, if somebody wants to rent the fields. So we're only trying to advocate the township building these fields at no cost to the township other than maybe some, you know, uh, coordination and, and management oversight. So you know, on the, on the uh, slide here, I'm requesting that this partnership, uh, <coughs> that you help us facilitate working legally, financially, and administratively when we do build the fields. Because again, we're, we're going to need the township's full support in order to do this. It's not something we can do by ourselves. So Jim, I think you understand what I'm, what I'm trying to ask for here. And I mean, it's not a vote or anything. It's just a cooperation thing. It's a, and so that if the township is not wanting something done, 
that's fine. You know, just let us know. The other side of that is to help us, give us access to get this project done, which is something that's been lacking, frankly. Not by this commission. Okay. All right. Brand, did you have another question? Uh, yeah, this is just a <clears throat> for action item B for approving the land. Um, would it would it make sense to amend it to uh, to have some consideration for the memorial that's there, and just say like a minimum safe distance, no disruption to uh, the existing memorial, and access to get back there? Yeah, I think that can be discussed when the drawings are brought yeah. to us. We can tweak them. Can we even vote on B if they don't have the drawings yet? No. Can you even vote on B if you don't have the drawings yet? Mm -mm. If you well, release like the I drawings. Said, I think the goal from what I'm understanding. Get the drawings. You know, this is kind of where we're at. So the goal was to get the commission vote to have more land. We, we know the diamonds do not fit in the land we approved them. We and know for that. clarification, fact, we knew right. that in, in 2018 in right. November. It was the so, very first thing we said. The goal, yes, try to try to get him in with where the sled hill was, and and Patrick is correct. That was not on Gyra. I will back you up on that. Um, so again, I was trying to make more room for them with the sled hill removal. Okay, remember we were all going through that. So this this has been a process, but the goal tonight, so they can move forward. If everyone's comfortable looking at this drawing, we know that it is going to encroach on the parking. He's saying it's not going to hit the memorial. You see what I mean? So we have to start somewhere. You know what I mean? So that's that's the goal of the vote tonight. Can I add to this? Absolutely. We, we've been talking about this since I've been on the commission. <clears throat> They've presented us with their, their stuff. I'm looking at something that they figured out a way to make work. I don't see why we would have any issues. They're not encroaching on the f soccer field. They're not encroaching on the memorial. They found a way to fit two diamonds, one of which can be used for softball, adult softball, which could be a revenue maker at some point. This looks like it works. I, I don't see any problems here. That's why we're voting on it today. I know. <laughs> I, I, I know. Just, but they still need to bring the about this drawings for so back. long. Yeah, 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 we yeah. finally we're, got something. We got yeah. a, if, yeah. if, if you don't approve the allocated land, I'm not going to go sp spend money on getting a drawing that I know right. won't fit. All right, so we wait till we get to the voting part down Absolutely. here. We don't vote on it yet. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Patrick. All right, public comment. I know you're here about the memorial. Will you guys come on up and introduce yourselves and just say your relationship and your feelings we all know but you know it would be nice you are on camera <laughs> Hello. hi my name is ryan kearney i live on grow all right um, this is sean and diane we are here just to be faces for the memorial kayla was a great friend of ours in high school she was a bright and beautiful light who was taken at 16 years old she loved to play soccer. That's basically all she did. If she wasn't hanging out with us, she was playing soccer with her family. After she passed away, her gravesite was moved to Illinois. None of us actually know where the gravesite is, so we don't have a place to visit, except for the memorial, which is our place that we go. Sean takes her daughter there, who is now four. She knows Kayla's name, and um, it's just, the only place that we have, and it's a very peaceful place, and we just wanted to make sure that we are in agreement with that the baseball diamonds will not encroach on the memorial, which they seem like they won't, which we thank you for making room for. Um, however, we do want to make sure that the peace of the memorial is preserved because this is right now a very peaceful and quiet location. So, Thank you so much. Thank you. That means a lot. It does. All of you. Thank now, did guys. they coach you on that, right, Jane, Ryan? <laughs> no. That with no. no. Just to keep my mind in place. Um, but, yes, we do thank you guys for keeping your mind out for the memorial and being a voice for us all. Thank you. Thanks, girls. Leads. All set. Any more public comment back there? Come on up, Becky. Hi, I'm Becky Arndt, and I'm the president of 
Gisa soccer. Um, I, my, I played softball and baseball all growing up, so I have nothing against baseball and soccer. Um, my job is to look out for the soccer, or I played softball, I'm sorry, to look out for the soccer program. Um, looking at your drawings, and I saw it go in when you expanded it, and it did look like there was room. It's a tight squeeze now to get a car back there with the sheds there. If you go any farther to get a car back for parking, it is very, very tight because of the railroad ties, that line, that field. How can we, my question is, what can we do to make that work? Because I put my car back there to load stuff and I was very scared to hit, and I have a traverse. So if you put bigger cars Are back you there. to the north lot that's being cleared? Yes, so like if you look at the fields right now, there's the sheds and there's that little drive space. Yeah. It's really tight now to put a car there. If you expand and put some nets in the middle of the parking lot, mm -hmm. it's going to be even tighter. And you were saying, well, it'll be easy to get cars back there. When you say sheds, are you re referring the to the crates. shipping containers? Yeah, the shipping containers. Those are yeah, movable. Not, those will be moved. I'm talking okay. in the picture, he showed nets in the middle of the parking lot. And the sheds are inside that yellow line. There's not much room between. There is not much room. The playing area, the, the road's not that big. I think right. you brought up 12 foot, 15 foot. If the field extends into that parking lot, there's hardly any land then to, to put get a, a car, car back, back there. And that was one of the up. things. Yeah. Because even yeah. now, for me to put my car back there, and I don't have but a big a suburban. Of, would there be traffic back there? Are you talking about there would be like two way traffic? Well, right now, like during rec soccer on Sundays, people do park back there. Well, the they wouldn't be able to. Well, then where are you going to put them? All of this 115 acres in front of this building. There's, there is so you're going to have grandparents park here and walk to the soccer fields? No, I, you know, I'll be frank with you. I think we should invest in a ADA compliant paved uh, parking lot adjacent <laughs> to the field. I think that's the bigger issue. I, I will be the first one to say <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't know about, you know, I know soccer doesn't have the money to pay for that. Well, we shouldn't pay for it. It's a, it's a public space. But I'm thinking outside the box is my thinking. Mm -hmm. Looking an forward ambulance going get ahead. Back there? No, there's no way an ambulance. My car can barely fit back there right is, now. Is there access to the north side of the soccer fields? No. I've seen one of the drawings there is a road. No. That's a, that's that's a bike the, path. That's the bike path. Uh, what area are you referring to an ambulance being able to reach? Like, so in his picture, currently the 11 v 11 field, which is our biggest field, is right next to the gyro shed. And in the... the drawing that he showed he had moved the 11 v 11 field if there's an injury on the 11 v 11 field there is no way to get an ambulance back there i'm gonna i'm gonna stop you right there okay. i know a guy on the fire department uh -huh. if there's an actual emergency that somebody is dying we are going to drive that rig across that field okay I, i'm just thinking up and i get yeah. that i get we'll what get you're there. saying i'm just saying but they were talking about parking there's no way to put cars in that back open lot is if we put a net there on the east side of your space in the drawing you showed, you showed it at the north end of the field. I, I didn't show Who, I, what, I don't have the pictures. Oh, that was it a was, five-year plan. Okay, don't thank you. Okay, because I'm like, our fields aren't there anyway. But the other question is, if your drawings, the drawings that the township's going to release, show that they don't fit where you would like to put them, what's the next plan? Uh, we'd have to reconvene and figure out what we're going to do. I mean, I mean, they will fit, but if they don't, then that's on us to figure out what Okay, to do. that was my next question. Yeah, we won't ask for more. Okay, that was my next question. Yeah, I mean, this is, we, we've been working for a year now oh, and trying I... to get them into the, the line <laughs> that was drawn, quite frankly, somewhat arbitrarily. You know, if you look at the lines that were drawn, yeah, I'm not sure okay. who did that, but I mean, if they had just had a thicker marker, we'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Can we know somebody like that? Oh, never mind. And then the qu the statement is you're asking for maintenance from the township. Are you meaning that baseball is going to take over the striping of these fields? Of the new fields? Yes. Yes. Okay, that was my question. When were you? Of all fields. Pardon? Oh, no, we're talking about that next month. Never mind. When okay. were you? Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Okay, so for these two fields, only during the the season, the spring season, when you use your fields? Yeah, primarily between uh, May, May and, and August. And July and right. So who takes care of them in the fall? That's my next question. Who wants to use them? Fall, then. Why would you strike them if they're not using them? Who's, who cuts the grass and everything? Uh, that's fall on, fall on the rec department. Ah, so you don't strike fields if you're not using 
I'm, no, I'm referring no, no, to grass cutting that, and maintenance. We cut our grass when we're not using yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's, if we have a 280-foot uh, field, it'll be used all the time, and we'll maintain it with either the funds generated from renting the field or however else we're going to do that. But okay. Still at a zero cost to the township. That's what my question was. Yeah, that was uh, one of the original conditions, if you all remember, when we first started. Yeah, we talked. Yeah, we talked about that a year ago. I want to say something too. Though. I I, I want to make sure there's still access to that property we have back there. You know that little thingy right here. <coughs> Down the road, just I guess we'll see when the drawings come. But I want th everyone to know that I still want to make sure there's access to get back there. Some kind of something. Because y'all got your sports fields, I want some place to buy a hot dog and a coke. I'm I'm. <laughs> I'm more concerned with just being able to fit a vehicle through. Sure. It doesn't have to be two-way traffic. It doesn't have right. to be. I just, if, as long as we can fit a vehicle back there. Because say, for example, you guys build your. Problem whatsoever. Yeah, because if you guys build a field and we decide we need to put this, make it a parking lot or make it a fountain or a park or something, we need to be able to get construction equipment back there to do the work so without destroying either of your fields. I believe there's a road that goes around be behind all this property here, too. Isn't there something that goes down back there? There's that service drive right yeah. now by the Slot Hill. Yeah, I don't behind know if that's going to be closed hill. off, but there is a service drive behind. It's not uh, accessible past the Slot Hill. Oh, okay. Yeah, it stops at the Slot Hill. Oh. Good, Becky? That was all my questions. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Any more public comment? Wow, we got a lot of action tonight here, didn't we? <laughs> All right, my report's going to go down with the uh, special events. Kim, director's report. Oh, I was going to do that when I announced my cultural and special events, but I can announce the chili cook-off. Sure. Can we get that on there? He had his laptop pulled in there. Well, we've decided to do something, uh, the chili cook-off. It's a good reason to get out of the house. It's Saturday, March 7th. We're going to host it at Smokey's. It's only $5 to enter your chili. Hey, Mike, can you give us a hand in here, please, from the Almost control room? On, but it's not going. What was the date on that again, Chad? Oh, what happened? What? Oh, I'm sending you all personal messages. <laughs> but uh, Saturday, March 7th. I hope people like hot stuff because Thanks. if I make a chili gonna take your hair off well you're a fireman dude i would expect that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's a good reason to come down and uh instead of doing the whole winter fest thing it's two dollars to taste all of them and there's a little sample there'll be a little sample cups and uh so you pay the two bucks and then you get to vote for which one you like obviously you know canned chili uh <laughs> two gallons minimum crock pot with an extension card and be considerate of allergies so this is at Smokies. You can register online at the Recreation Department, and it's Saturday, March 7th at noon. So, okay, Kim, you have some other programs? I just want to first thank the, um, the families that did come to family date night. Um, we had kind of a low enrollment this year. I don't know if it was the weather or what, but um, the families that were there did enjoy bouncy houses, a craft, pizza. Chad and I worked the night, and everyone was pretty happy, so... Um, so thanks to those um, individuals that came. Um, our next event um, is the Daddy-Daughter Dance, and we are filling up very quickly. Um, so deadline for registration for that event is tomorrow. So That's Friday the 7th? Yeah, Friday. Feb I don't have a flyer on that one. Um, February 7th is the date for the dance, and that is at the middle school. And the good part is we do have both the gyms. We have the main gym and the auxiliary and the cafeteria. So we can um, hold more um, daddies and daughters. So, And don't it. forget, if they need flowers or if they need their hair For done and nails, you we can We support Macomb Street with the hair salons the and the, the uh, flower shops, Kroger and Hawthorne. And Hawthorne and Vine, Sam's no. Place. I have my little boutonniere coming, and I have a hair appointment. So daddy-daughter dance. And there's like, we're pushing close to 300. Yeah, we are, we are up to 300, so... Um, so that's going to be a fun night, and all the commissioners will be there working, right? It's from 6 to 9? You have to be there. No, it's from 6.30 to, to 8. 8, but oh. you should be there at 6 yeah. to get your bearings. 
Uh, okay, next event. Um, this is, uh, again, we always do uh, bowling night, mother-son bowling night. Get registered for that. Um, and again, registrations are really important um, to the overall evaluation of the programs that the commission and myself are looking at. When we have low enrollment, we say, ah, oh, it's just not working anymore. We may end up taking it away and try to think of something else to put in its place. But again, mother-son bullying, I think, has been part of REC even before I came. It's, it's a traditional kind of the daddy-daughter dance thing as well, too. So, um, you know, we need, we need registrations to keep these events going. Um, so if you're pondering your thoughts and you don't want to see bowling night, grab a, grab a buddy and, and register. So um, other things, always pickleball Tuesdays and Thursdays. We had a slight shift of um, the time start on Thursdays. I got contacted by Gyra Basketball, um, and they are overflowing as well. Not enough gym space. Um, so obviously I'm trying to work with them and, you know, give up some of our, our time that we had there. And so the kids, you know, we're all sharing and making things work. So but again, this is drop in $3. We have paddles, extra paddles for those of you that would like to try pickleball. I know it's becoming pretty popular around here. Um, we have nice numbers on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if you want to try it and that's at the Meridian um, school. <clears throat> And then this event, this is actually a new program, the Walk Walkover Tuesdays. <coughs> we got a nice enrollment. I think, Kevin, I gave you those numbers. How many we got in the walkover? Nine. Nine. We got nine kids. I'd love, like, I'm trying to figure out, you know, what programs does the community want? I have a Facebook post out there. I reach out to the community. What are you looking for? What do you want? Because this is a year this commission is putting together a new master plan that will extend five years and it's time to start coming to meetings, emailing, talking to your commissioners because we will be building the master plan for this community in the next five years. So your input is critical to where we're heading with, with recreation, with our parks, with our programming, with our fields. You know, there's talk about a swimming pool, there's talk about a fitness center, there's all this talk but we, as a commission, have to put this together and what is our vision with our community for the next five years. So I just wanted to throw that in there. <clears throat> um, couple senior events. Uh, Miss Ethel is not feeling well tonight, so I did want to talk a little bit um, about our bus. Struggling big time with getting our seniors on this bus. We got this bus close to a year ago, it'll be in um, August. It is a 14 passenger bus. It is handicap accessible. And we're taking senior, we're offering this to our seniors two times a month, pick them up at their house, take them to Meyer. That was their favorite place to go, so I scheduled it for Meyer. They didn't like the Walmart. I do what they wanna do. I had two registrations for this past Wednesday. My minimum is five to operate the bus. I don't think that's a bad thing. Kim, um, Kim, I think weather plays a big part it, of this. Right, but even some of the trips in the past, the numbers have been low. Okay. So what I'm asking my commission and even um, our community members behind us is we've got, there's only a, a certain way to get through to our seniors. I stand here and I talk. Um, I talk at the board meetings. Um, they don't do a lot of social media. They're not following the Facebooks and GI Connects and all of that. So I'm asking the commission um, and our community partners, if, if you have another outlet to reach the seniors, we always have the profile. Um, but this is a great service for our, our seniors. And I'm struggling not understanding why they're not taking advantage of that, especially on the, tr on the bus. We physically go into the store and shop with them. We help them shop. I get the buggies lined up and reach for the cans up top and, and all of that. So commission, I need your help. Community partners behind me, just get the word out that these services are available. We do put posters up at um, Island Woods and what's the other one up on Macomb Street? And it's just, this bus was like, what, three years in the making, Greg? No, it was, five, it was almost a five, five years. I think we waited five years and for now it. We now have we have this. it. No one's using it. No one wants to go on it. 
So behave, boys, down there. I have the gavel right here. So just try to, you know, if you see seniors and you know, you know, friends and family, just let them know that we have the bus uh, and we have started to pick up on individual calls from residents that are in a wheelchair that need this bus to get to a doctor's office. We have starting to pick up individual calls, which is a, that's a positive. We're getting them to the doctor's appointments and so forth. So, um, and then we have our regular transportation um, that operates Tuesday through Friday from 1230 to 430. That's just the general, that's the smaller transit bus. So, um, and then the last thing I just want to present is the St. Patrick's Day luncheon for our seniors. And that is Wednesday, March 11th. And that's at 1230. And that's the traditional, um, I can't think of the meal now. I just drew Hornby. Hornby. Yeah, but... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's $10 and we offer free transportation. Mm -hmm. Uh, to our seniors that day that need picked up. We usually pick up about eight people from Island Woods um, and they have a fun time on the bus and they have a fun time at the luncheon. So, and that's really all I have right now. So community input, email me 24 seven, call me nine to five um, and let me know what you would like to see the rec department do for the master plan for the next five years. Do we, are we going to sit down together in a room, the commission, and go through some of that? The goal that I would Chair like to start, and if we could, and I wanted to talk to the commission about this, is on commission nights, you know how we j just had a study, so take a half an hour, you know, we don't need two hours or three hours, but if we meet a half an hour before our meetings and maybe start talking about the master plan, invite the community for input from 6 to 6.30 and then start our meetings at 6.30. I think that would be a nice way to get started. And then as we, you know, start to get some input, schedule some other meetings, and we just use them as a special meeting to talk about the master plan. So, when does that do? Um, end of the year. End of the year, okay. But it takes a good six to eight months to put sure. something together. Yeah. So it's really up to what the commission would like to do on how to develop that. Um, that's just kind of a, a beginning point. If everyone's, you know, start at six, start talking about the master plan and then have our meetings at 6.30 throughout the year, we could do that. I think that's just a nice, because we're already here. We're all here together to begin with. So. Okay. Yeah, talk about it. We can right, figure cool. that out. Okay. Thanks, Kim. Yep. Old business, new business, subcommittees. Mr. Nelson, Township Board Liaison. I don't know anything tonight at this point. Thank you. Kyle's not here. Kim, anything about Water's Edge Place, Cape or Sunrise Park? Uh, the ice rink's open. <laughs> right. How about that? Yeah. So, and I just want to tell, um, you know, I want to shout out to Gene. Um, he did seal the rink, and that really made a difference. He, he did that whole rink by himself and sealed it up. It, it is holding the water a lot better. Um, I was out there, saw kids skating today, and it, it was just nice. And it's a really nice sheet of ice, believe it or not. No Zamboni. We, I don't know. I'm just happy. I'm happy. So there is ice out there at the rink. Right now. For it now, right melt. now. Yeah. <laughs> so. so it hits 40 this weekend. No, it's supposed to be bad this weekend. All right. I just want to, we talked about the chili cook-off. I just want to remind everybody there is an island fest. It's May 29th, 30, 31. It's the last weekend of May after Memorial Day, so mark that on your calendars. Island Fest, May 30, or 29, 30, 31. Um, Mr. Brandon and Tosh. Yeah, so we did just complete a review of the budget with the finance director of the township. Um, quick highlight, um, golf net for the year. Uh, we're operating at a loss of an estimated 107000 Marina is positive to 3,000. The pool is uh, operating at a loss of 23,000. Island Fest is operating at a positive of almost 9,000. And other recreation, lease income, recreation income, grounds and maintenance, and recreation expenses, the net of that is um, 163,000 positive. And uh, when all of that is said and done uh, for the year, we're at, we're at a positive $44,000. Uh, we still have two and a half months left of the fiscal year, so we'll see how the actual shakeout at the end of the year. 
Um, but the way that the budget is being operated uh, underneath Kim, uh, everything's looking great, and we're we are uh, operating well within our boundary and, and, and saving money for big projects that can come up in the future. That's all I have. I wonder, so do you have the numbers for that golf? I just want to ask you, what's it, what are we losing on that a year? 107,000? 107,000. And I also want to highlight um, a little historical uh, number to that. So golf, golf revenue as of 2016 was 115,000. Mm-hmm. Revenue in 17 was 106,000, so we're down 10,000 year over year. As of 18, it was down another thousand to 105. Uh, in 2019, it was down to 101,000. And for uh, the 2020 end fiscal year, we're at 103,000, so kind of flat. But we, we see we, we've had a, a steady decline in revenue. Um, expenses um, for 16. Uh, started off at uh, 200,000 in expense. 17 was uh, 254,000. 18 was 226,000. 19, 222,000. And 210,000 in 2020. So our loss uh, going, er, well, net, netting revenue and expenditures uh, a, against each other. And in 16, we had 83,000 uh, to a loss. 17, 148,000 to a loss. Eight, 18, 121,000 to a loss. 19, another 121,000. And this year, an estimated 107,000 loss. Wow. So over the last five years, I'm looking at a, we're close looking to at 600,000 600, loss. In loss on that golf course, just putting it out there. Thank you, Brandon. Yep. The numbers guy. Ms. Karen Olenek for Centennial Farms presentation. I'm going to save my comments for discussion item B. Okay. <laughs> that was good. Um, Mr. Brower and Greg about recreation land and properties. I have nothing to report. Greg? All right. NASO, local business and community groups. What's going on in Macomb? Yeah, Street, one thing, uh, February 8th, uh, the DDA is hosting an event on Macomb Street called the Chocolate Walk. <laughs> All the businesses will hand out chocolate treats and offer shopping discount opportunities. Horse and carriage rides are available as well. And then obviously continue to support all our local businesses on the island. That's it for that. Is that it? That's Wait. it. You got anything about who does the thing on the schools? Oh, Wendy. Oh, you want me to do rec? Recreation yeah. program? Yes. 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 So um, some good programs going on right now. The first and second grade basketball. Uh, we've got a good enrollment of about 11 kids. As we mentioned earlier, the kids mobile fitness has 12 kids involved. Uh, there's two tennis after school events, one at Park Lane, which I believe sold out at 21 kids. And the Meridian after school has 15 kids involved, and there's still five slots open. So if any of your kids want to play tennis, uh, get a hold of the rec department. And then the walkover Tuesdays, we mentioned earlier, are nine kids involved in the program right now. <coughs> That's all I have. And Gyra basketball started, so. What's, uh, Wendy, I know you know about the kids, the elementary school kids. What's that basketball for them? Gyra. That's gyro. gyro. That's gyro. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's like Park Lane and Meridian? Yeah. Because okay, it seems pretty popular. Okay. Um, when you talked about Macomb Street, I was invited to attend a meeting there. They're going to be doing some, making it look a little better to invite people there and <coughs> put up some art projects maybe. And I'm going to attend that on Wednesday the 29th. So I'll come back and let you know how that all went. Um, did it? That's it. Okay. Ethel's not here. You I sent Ethel's notes to uh, to Wendy. Hopefully, we can expand them. Yeah. I, it's, I, I can't read them. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> That's going to bring us to Wendy now. I know <laughs> it's kind of hard. I don't even think my I didn't see it on can't here. See oh, it. you didn't get it? Okay. It, it's very tiny. I, I would have a hard time reading it. I don't want to I don't want to say the wrong things. <laughs> a lot. I, I, I kind of touch based on the senior lunch and the senior transportation, <clears throat> um, the senior meetings as in the profile, those dates and times and so forth. So I think we hit most of that, I hope. 
All right, school liaison, Wendy Kearney. Did um, the girls give you anything? Yeah, from... um, Abby couldn't make it, obviously, because this is known as Midterm Madness Week. So if the kids aren't playing any high school sports, they're probably sitting at home studying. Tomorrow's the last day. Um, but there are come out and support the basketball, ho hockey, and wrestling programs. <laughs> and the winter dance is February 21st. I just want to make sure everybody knows. Frosty. The Frosty dance. <laughs> That's what she shared. Wendy needs whatever you just said there. Could have it all. I'll give it this one. Either. All right, so I um, can report out on Park Lane and Meridian. So on January 31st, which is a week from tomorrow, we have the Detroit Red Wings marketing department coming to both schools. They are going to be doing a presentation or an assembly for the kids on um, motivating uh, motivation and, and different things like that, team sports. Um, they're also going to donate a full set of street hockey equipment for both schools. Um, one of the other things that's a piece of that is they do a family night at one of the Red Wings games. So um, we've picked Tuesday, March 10th. Um, tickets are $25. Every, five do or every ticket that's sold, $5, will go back to the school. And if the school's able to sell 100 tickets or more, then the Red Wings will donate an additional $500 uh, to the school. So hopefully um, that will be a big hit. Um, then we have, um, for through PAT, we have um, the Ned's Kindness Show coming February 10th, and they're going to come in and do a pr assembly for the kids on kindness. And then they also, a, a piece of theirs is they have a kindness sale, and they sell different things um, that um, individuals made from Kenya. So they'll bring that stuff in. And the nice thing about this program is there's no cost, and what it is is, the the money that's raised through the 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 things that they sell rings and keychains and necklaces and stuff like that um pays it forward so then another school will be able to have this as well and won't have to pay for it so. i'll take one of those right there no <laughs> you sell that i mean do you have it or no we, we well we will when they come we'll have it at the school so yeah so we have those two things coming up um then um, the school is doing the Alice training for the parents. It's a well, it's an informational meeting um, for the alert, lockdown, um, encounter, contact, and evacuate program. That's going to be on January 30th. Um, and then um, we also have uh, Steam Night coming up at both the elementary schools. Uh, Miss Metric does that for both the schools. February sixth for Park for Meridian, excuse me, from six to seven thirty, and then at Park Lane on February thirteenth, um, same times as well. And then Valentine's Day is around the corner, so the kids have a half a day. All the kids have a half day um, on Valentine's Day, and then that will go. What? Listen, <laughs> elementary schools have a half day. On me now. Yeah, well, I mean, it it that leads it leads into winter break, so then the kids are off that <coughs> Monday and Tuesday for winter break. And then I just want to remind folks, box tops. If you guys um, have any box tops laying around, they've gone to a digital version now. But if you have any that are laying around, the schools always can use those. It's ten cents a piece, and it adds up and it buys things for the kids. What do you mean box tops? Like box tops mm -hmm. on different products. It's like a barcode. Yeah. Oh, you it's want like the barcode? Well, no, it's a, well, they that's have a, box top yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah, so, um, I think that's it that I have, yep, that's it. Thank you, mm -hmm. thanks, Wendy. Action <laughs> items, 11A, vote and approve to scrap township vehicle 2001, yellow Ford 250, short bed, VIN number FTNX 20L. What the heck does that say? 92. 92EA49601. It's an old, one of our old yellow DPS trucks. It's number four. Kim, we're just scrapping it. Uh, it's, 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 it's the last <laughs> trip. I'm sorry. It's, no. you know, the yellow trucks. Yeah, that we um, see around it's, here. It's, it's time to go out to pasture. And again, so, any city vehicle um, does have to come to the commission and get approval for scrapping. So that's why that. So we're going to put one of those yellow trucks to rest. I'll uh, put a motion out there. Oh, make that motion. Thanks, Rich. Second. I'll second. Greg, any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Aye, yellow truck. <laughs> All right, next one. Vote and approve gyro baseball land adjustment request for field developments. 
I would need a motion for that. I'll also make the motion. Second. Wendy, any discussion about this? Now that we've already talked about it. Greg, how do you vote? We're going to do a roll. 11B. The land. My motion? No, the motion's already put out there. I already got a second. I need you to say yes or no. The land adjustment. Oh, the land adjustment. I, yes. I'm sorry. I was confused. <laughs> Okay, you say yes, Karen. So this is, just to make it clear, this is not just to give the prints. This is to vote to approve. 18 feet by 60 feet additional property. Um, I'm, I, on, I mean, I, I, I understand why you need the prints and I, you know, I don't have a problem with that, but I would really like to have you come back just to make sure that everything is going to be the way it's presented. And if it is, I would feel better voting then. And I can't see that there would be a problem then. She can hold her vote if she wants. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're, all we're asking is that the, the maximum amount of land that we would use is up for the allocation, which means that we could use less. But I mean, but the issue is that if we're going to invest in the drawings, mm -hmm. we know we're going to no, I get that. That's all right. The drawings are in the next one, though. Kevin? Uh, I'm going to vote no. Wendy? Yes. Rich? Yes. Brandon? Um, I just want to be clear that, you know, there's preservation of of that memorial. I, I know that it's not going to encroach on that space, but again, still. Um, Since we have representatives here, is, is that acceptable you can for my vote? Try. Come on up here for, a, for a microphone, would you please? And I know you kept saying you wanted quiet and, and peaceful, and you're going to have to find certain times. I have a feeling for that because you gotta you got to understand it's so, yeah. they're right. sports fields. We also yeah. acknowledge that it is a sports yeah. field, and yeah. there are times when it's noisier than others, but. Um, it, it it is what it is it's a messy thing but as of right now i would say we're okay with that but of course we don't have the whole group chat going to discuss it all but sure will you get involved with that like, when you leave here tonight yeah of course that's 38 great. feet that's roughly yeah. sounds pretty good yeah okay thank uh, you thank you yes brandon that is a yes for me jim nelson yes all right okay. good okay 11 C. Okay, that motion passed. Yes, sir. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, I'm trying to read here. Greg, put the motion to vote and approve to release the drawings from the township of C.E. Rains. Is that who holds those drawings? All right. Um, uh, Greg, put the motion. Who's going to second that motion? I will. Rich. Rich, any discussion about this? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Aye. All right. So moved. You got the drawings coming too. Hmm? Yeah. Discussion items. Now remember, only 20 to 30 parking spaces. I have that written down. <laughs> Accepting applications. Oh. <laughs> uh, discussion items. 12A, accepting an application for the Community Recreation Commission chairperson, which I am right now, plan to vote and approve new chair at the February 27th, 2020 meeting. I want to stay on until I get the other, th maybe the other direction my life's going to go that y'all know. Your, does your term, when is your term? I don't have the sheet in front of me. When do you expect? They all ended April, I think, which is, no, it isn't. Oh. That's festival. Yeah. I'll have to get back to you with that answer, ma'am. <laughs> just not sure yeah I think the hard part you know obviously Chad is running for um, a township trustee seat um, his term does expire in um, March 31st so as a commission you know we can decide if how we want to work that if if we want to keep our chairman in place and until um, or we 
say sorry <laughs> to Chad. You know that. So I think we can discuss that. But I do have to at least acknowledge yes. the situation to the commission and how we would like to to proceed with that. So start thinking about that. Um, I think there's a maybe look into a uh, co-chair too, possibly for right. recreation. If you guys are into that, then you know. And we can do there. a co-chair this and and just maybe have that in place. And when he does step out, we can elect a co-chair to our chairman. That's a doable idea as well. So call me, let me know how you want to, to work that for February and we can add a co-chair at this time and keep on going. Anybody got their eye on the prize? Because <laughs> it comes to the township board for approval. Right. right. Yeah. But right. you know what I have never understood through the township is my festival chair seat goes from April to April. So it always seemed kind of odd that I would put 10 months 11 months into an event and then have to walk away a month before the event that makes absolutely no sense to me you know yes i've heard <laughs> <laughs> so well, we you know we we are a good commission we can talk these things through for sure you're talking wreck aren't you rich yeah oh, okay yeah. so okay so we'll work on all that would you accept the co-chair seat to start with? Uh, I can let you run a couple of meetings and step back. <laughs> Hanging a treat. Yeah. Right. Oh, after. We'll talk about All it. All right, we'll thanks. talk about it. Okay. We can work it. We can work through that. Twelve B. What's that? Yeah, my ego. Ouch, Rich. <laughs> um. So it, it, it pertains to Luton's farm lease, uh, the horses at the uh, farms, and we really need to look into how all that goes. Um, I just wanted to just have a brief discussion tonight about the lease um, that was signed um, several years ago and is uh, there's an extension and it will expire in 2022. Just to let you know. So we are in a current working lease with Luton Riding Academy. All of you have a copy of the lease. Um, so the reason I wanted to bring this um, up, a little bit of discussion tonight is, you know, some of the things that we talked about in our financials about the farm operations and, and the funding there and where that funding comes from and the revenue sources that how we do maintain the farm and you guys were all in that meeting. Um, so the concern, since I have been here, it'll be three years in May, and I've explained to my commission that I monitor things, I watch things, I kind of see what's happening. I've evaluated the leases, including Smokey's lease. I've kind of evaluated this lease and um, evaluated the operations out at the farms. And the one thing that I, I really need to discuss tonight is who is responsible to maintain fences? In the lease that you all have that Mr. Luton signed, it does specifically say. They are. Yeah. Am I correct? As a tenant. Yeah. As a tenant, they are to maintain those fences. Did, did everybody read that? Yes. Okay. So. Just so the commission know that the rec department has been maintaining the fences to let you all know that Gene, our summer help kids, um, he is out there and even you guys can drive by and you'll see a, a fence replaced and it's not painted just yet. Now so these fences, the repairs are due to the, the horses, horses chewing on them? Yeah, that sure. is correct. Yeah. Do, you have, do you have a number of how much we've spent? Repairing I can these? get that, but it, it's the boards are, are very expensive. It's labor intensive. Where you know jeans, you got to dig the holes out, you know, and place those those um, fences in there. So when I had a conversation um, with Luton about this, there was some talk way before I got here, way before all of you were on the commission. Um, there was a, a conversation with Mr. Rooney that the rec department is supposed to fix these fences. And I said, well, I'm looking at an actual live lease that is signed, and we are where we are now that I will be enforcing 
that. I, I feel that the rec department over the last three years, I can only speak for when I've been here, we have done more above and beyond to, to fix those fences. Now, if you're in your apartment, you rent an apartment and your dog is chewing up the windowsill, who's responsible <coughs> for that? Okay, things like that. So, and again, there was there was some you know discussion over the summer. I and I get along great with him. We have a nice working relationship. I have no problems out there. No one calls, complains. No, I have nothing of that. So that's not what this is about. This is about talking to my commission, saying we are going. I am going to follow this lease to a T. Okay, and. I'm not a negative person in any way, shape, or form, but there are a few items that have not been followed by our tenant. The one concern that I want to bring to the commission is that part of that lease, he is permitted to have the apartment that is now, that's been attached to the, the shelter. You guys know where the apartment is attached to the shelter. We have kids, we have families, we've got people walking around at the farm, I don't, I've never seen a lease agreement between his tenant and Luton presented to me. We don't, I don't know who's staying in that apartment. I don't know if they've been background checked. Those are the kinds of things that will be enforced for the safety of our community. And again, my due diligence, I, I, I can admit I've just kind of sat back and monitored but I feel now it's time to acknowledge this lease and put it into full force. Um, I have a letter drafted that will be sent to Mr. Luton <clears throat> tomorrow. You all have a copy of that. I hope all of you have read that. Um, and again, this is not bad. I'm not bashing, because like I said, he, he has a nice operation out there. I know some of you have kids riding horses and all that. But when you have a lease in play, you sign the lease, you follow the lease, am I right? Does everyone agree to that? Is everyone understanding where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you know, when I, when I look at this and I, I see that we're $132,000 upside down between our pool and our golf course, and I see that we're pouring money into something that was in a lease that isn't been followed, and we're paying for these things, we need to, there's a hole in our bucket and we need to seal it. That, that's why I'm bringing it to your attention. I mean, yeah, you just look at the first page and what goes on and what doesn't on here, you know, it's crazy. And again, take take a minute, reread things. Like, we are, we're, we should have schedules. The rec department is, is should have the equestrian team schedule. We need to know who the staff person is on 24 hours a day. That's in, like, everything that's in the letter that is kind of a repetitive of what the lease states. I'm not really changing the lease in any way, shape, or form. I'm pulling out some of the things that need to be addressed. That's the goal of the letter of communication to Mr. Luton out there. That's all that is. So, but again, the fences, the rec department will maintain the perimeter fence. Everyone knows the perimeter, okay? You have a map in your packet of where the horses are kept and the horses are chewing the fences and Karen you can jump in you're the well they're cribbing they're right and they don't actually eat it they just bite it and and basically rip it the area that they're biting in right um, and that's usually from boredom or stress or it can be a lot of reasons right, right. So I just need support from the commission. You understand where I'm going with the lease, and I will begin to enforce that starting tomorrow. So, Thank you for that. Yeah. So, Kim, you say that effective on this day, all prior damage and wear and tear shall be null and void. So any damage prior to... We've got most of... we. A. Yeah, we have repaired a lot out there. To be forgotten. Just recreation took care of it. We did take care of that. We're not back charging. We're not gonna go back on that. Okay. Yep. Moving forward. Moving forward. Okay. Hey Kim, real quick question. Yep. Um, Turn your mic on. Sorry. Reading the term, it says 
Uh, end on June 30th, 2017. I don't think you were, were you here yet? June 30th? Yeah. I was here for Started. four weeks. So I assume it just arbitrarily extended? Yeah. yeah this is okay. Just I'm just looking at the signature that's an ex Yeah, the signature was literally four weeks after I started, and it was an extension of the lease. That oh, okay. Correct. I was just looking at this page. I just want to make sure. Yeah. I believe it started in 13. Yeah. Yeah, it started in 13. 13, correct. So it goes till 22. Okay. Yep. What happens after 22? We will review it. Center. See if we would like to offer an extension. <laughs> um, if we, and again, at any point, there is a statement in there if we would like to make changes to this lease, we are permitted to do so. Obviously, we would have a discussion with tenant. We're not just going to throw them, you know, some big changes. But if there's something you would like to see out there, um, change in the lease, please bring it to my attention. Well, I would like to say there is so much potential there. That the whole grounds are beautiful. The township has done a really nice job with the improvements. But some of the things, and we don't really have to get into it, but some of the things that are a possibility that would be nice there are maybe clinics. Uh, I mean, there's so many nice pastures there that we could utilize and bring other people in and 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 make money on as well um, but it's all good it's all positive things I, I did walk the grounds and I saw Jean over there in the fall and in the summer and I saw the repairs on the fencing and it looked very nice I, I think there's been a lot of progress and of course this isn't part of the uh, equestrian but the decorations and the grounds it always looks very nice and attractive over there so I want to say you know that the township has done an amazing job on that and once again, there's so much potential there. I think we should just keep for moving forward in a positive manner. And uh, I think we are, actually. We are. OK. Yep, and that's all I all have. Right, cool. That's just discussion. Any extended public comments out there? Individual commissioner comments, Greg? Nothing at this time. Karen? Nothing. Kevin? No. Wendy? No. Rich? <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say. Uh, Prayers for the families of the lost. There were three firefighters that went out to Australia to help out. There's several hundred that went out. Three of them passed away mm. uh, out there fighting fire. So, God bless. God bless. Uh, Brandon? Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming today, and we appreciate you showing your support and, and helping us make better decisions as a Recreation Commission. Um, also, Happy New Year. That's all I have. Mr. Nelson? Kim? I'm good, thank you. All right, I just want to say, don't forget, we are coming up into an election year. I know there's a lot <laughs> going on out there, and everybody just do what you think's right. Whoop. Is that all good, Mr. Bletcher? <laughs> 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 I want to thank everybody for coming. We will, uh, the next meeting is February 27th. I would uh, like to, and I need a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.08. I'll make that motion. Rich, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good night, everybody.